Okay, Casey, today we're gonna to be talking about some great out-of-the-box marketing ideas. And I was doing a little research and I came across this thread on Quora called, What Are Some Examples of Great Marketing? All right. And All just right. I just kind of scrolled through briefly and there's some really good stuff in here. So what I wanna do is I wanna go through these. And I think our, our judge here, like, copy's one thing, design is one thing, but what we're really judging on here I think is like, out of the box thinking, like something that's really more experiential, that really makes the makes the consumer kind of think about what's happening. Yeah, if you know what I mean. Okay, I like so that. I think that's going to be kind of our our measuring rod. And so, if you think that the idea is especially mind blowing, give us a boom, mind blown. And if yeah. it's just kind of meh, mm. meh. Okay, so you'll be okay. our judge. And let's go ahead and talk about some of these. So this is a thread, uh, Quora, I'll put the link to this post if you wanna go see them, but it's uh, from Quora. What are some examples of great marketing? Great. Okay, so the first one I wanna look at here is one from DHL. So DHL is obviously a parcel delivery. They're a competitor with UPS yep. and uh, FedEx. And so what they did back in 2014 was they actually used thermochromatic paint. Mm and they covered these boxes with thermochromatic paint and they had them shipped by UPS and FedEx so that when they warmed up, these UPX and FedEx guys were walking around town carrying these giant <laughs> boxes that says DHL is faster. That's pretty brilliant. So yeah. you give it a mind blown or you give it a meh? Yeah, no, I'm giving mind blown because it's real world. Like, yeah. I like that it was not just marketing, but like proof is in the pudding. Yeah. We're actually we're actually going to kind of pr prove this kind of thing. So, yeah. And then anytime you bring in like competitors like that yeah. and you kind of um, it reminds me of kind of the fast food Twitter wars that we've seen. Yeah. I I, I think they did a, I think they did a good job. I'm going to say mind blown. Okay, so here's another one. Um so this one is we were talking about fast food. This one is uh, fast food. Uh, okay. This was Burger King. All right, all and right. so what they did was they went on Twitter and they went back to like 10 years ago. This this campaign was a couple years old. So they went back to tweet from 2010 and they started liking tweets of people with big followings from like 2010. Okay. And so it started to be trending. Like these people with all these followers started saying, why is Burger King all yeah. of a sudden liking these tweets from 10 years ago? Yeah. And so it started, and, and they were like, other people were like, me too. They're liking my tweets too. What is what is Burger King doing over here? And so what we found out was uh, it was part of this campaign where they eventually tweeted out, once they'd kind of generated all this kind of social juice, they tweeted, some things from 2010 are worth revisiting, like your old tweets and funnel cake fries. Get them now for a limited time. So basically it was like this zero cost way to generate some buzz around this re-release for a product they hadn't seen in, in 10 years or so. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> I'm going man. Yeah, I know what you mean. I, li I like the concept. Like, I, I guess, I guess, I guess, okay, look, in terms of like big picture marketing strategy, this was not uh, like a, a billion dollar campaign. That was free. It was free. And so yeah. I, I love it from that standpoint. Um, but in terms of like, I, I don't know, how much traction did it get? What did it yeah. do? I, but it's creative. It's creative to do that. Um, I'd, I'd love to see some I, data, I also, I don't, right? I'm, not, I'm also not 100% sure I'm sold on some uh, funnel cake fries. <laughs> that may <laughs> that, have that something be, to do yeah, with that's it. True. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about, well, I'd try it. I'd try it. I'd try it. <laughs> how do you say it? Lacoste or Lacosta? Either one? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna, for purposes of this video, we're gonna say Lacoste. Okay, so they are a premium French sportswear brand and they wanted to do kind of this philanthropic thing where they wanted to draw some attention to endangered species. And so they, at one point, you know, they have their iconic alligator yeah, logo yeah, yeah. that they have on shirts. So at one point they started replacing the alligator temporarily with okay. endangered species. Cool. Um, so obviously it's it's bringing awareness to to a real problem with endangered species but also it's good marketing for their brand because yeah. they're gonna find some people with shared values who are probably gonna absolutely it raises their brand affinity people are gonna buy their stuff because of it yeah what do you think about that
so in this like, <laughs> so far my, DHL's my, the winner. <laughs> well, in terms of like mind blown, yeah, no, right, super tasteful campaign. Like I'm a I'm a big fan of it. Yeah, but if you but if my choices are mind blown, right, or meh, um, I'm probably leaning more toward towards meh. Even though I lo- even though I love it. Yeah, like, it's cool. I, it's cool. It's very cool. I, I love the idea of it, and I think. Um, yeah, there are people who definitely, like you said, shared values. We're going out and grabbing those shirts. Okay, this is cool. So Lay's, uh, so Lay's, this is pretty simple. It's a pretty simple concept, but uh, they did this packaging a while back where they put the bottom half of faces on their Lay's bags. Okay. And so the result was <clears throat> people taking all of these photos and posting their se- themselves with the Lay's bag. So it's basically turning their customers into kind of the their salespeople in a way. What do you think about this? Hmm. <laughs> and, and here's, here's you know, we've got screenshots here of like the trending hashtags that okay. came from the campaign. You know, 35,000 posts on that hashtag, 42,000, 633,000 posts on the Lay's hashtag. So it's pretty big, pretty big reach for this campaign organically. Yeah. Uh, people, people posting their pictures with their Lay's bag. Yeah. Good advertising? Yes. Mind blowing? Not mine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Sorry. laughs> All right. Okay. Next one's from Puma. So this is a little more. Um, uh, this is an older campaign. This is like from 1970. Okay. So they gave Puma gave Pele $120,000 simply to stop for a moment, squat down, and tie his shoes in the middle of the 1970 World Cup finals. Because they knew, they knew that when he did that, cameras were going to focus in on Pele, and everyone was going to be looking at what shoes, what shoes he was wearing? tying, which happened to be Puma, of course. Yeah. So this was a scripted moment in the World Cup that Puma paid for. What do we think of that? Hmm. Right, that's a, this is a tough one because, in terms of attention. Mm-hmm. They had they had the eyeballs yeah. at that moment. Um, the fact that it was scripted and it didn't happen organically makes you feel a little bit duped. What well, makes you wonder how how often that actually it's happens? It's true. Yeah. I mean, this was 1970. We've gotten yeah. a lot more uh, sneaky since then, probably. <laughs> well, and we're not even hiding product placement for things true. now. Yeah, boy. Uh, so given 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 when it occurred. Yeah. 1970, uh, they knew they were going to have the eyeballs. World Cup, probably like worldwide biggest sporting event that there is. Yeah. I think, I think mind blown, they, 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 they nailed it. Okay, this is KFC. Okay. What do you think of KFC's fries, first of all? You like KFC's <coughs> fries? Have you even had KFC's fries? You're not a fast food guy. I'm not a fast food guy, yeah. so I can't say, that, can't say that I have. Okay, well, it turns out a while back that a lot of people were posting on Twitter that they didn't like KFC's fries. Well, I kind of thought they were known more for like fried chicken and like mashed potatoes yeah. and stuff like that. They, they do, do have fries. fries. Okay, okay. And people don't like them, <laughs> apparently. Well, yeah. So what what people did, uh, or what KFC did, was they took some of these mean tweets, basically, like this one that says, Dear KFC, no one likes your fries. Yours sincerely, the entire world. So what they did was they made that tweet, and I think several others, uh, like advertisements. Love and it. They put them on like telephone booths and in magazines and bus stops and stuff like that. And um, they kind of generated all of this press around, yeah, we, we own it, our fries aren't good, but also we got new fries coming. Um, what do you think of that? Yeah, uh, that's, that's mind blown. Okay, so here's another one, fast food. This is Burger King. Um, this was in 2017, and it was a campaign just around Halloween where they were giving out, wait for it, they were going to give you a free Whopper on Halloween if you show up dressed like a clown. Okay. Into Burger King. Okay. Right? Clowns. Yeah. Burger yeah. King. McDonald's. So yeah. they're kind of jabbing at McDonald's. Yeah. So if you came on t- 2017 and Halloween, if you came into Burger King dressed like a clown, they'd give you a free Whopper. And their advertisements for this said, come as a clown, eat like a king. Okay. So apparently what happened is like, uh, it was one Halloween night at Burger King outlets were jam-packed with more than 110,000 clowns showed up <laughs> at Burger King. Yeah. 
uh, let's see. Sales increased globally 15%. The campaign got 2.1 billion impressions and earned 22.4 million in earned media. Yeah. They were talk people were talking about it. Yeah, what do you think of that? Mind blown or meh? Boy, that's a good one. The only the only thing I think I'm going to go mind blown because uh -huh. because I I don't think I would have put to, the I, the cons, the thing where it it, it kind of crossed over for me is when they had you come dressed as their competitor's mascot. Right. Yeah. Um without calling out Ronald McDonald. Yeah. Um, but in the imagery we see here they're People clearly, are clearly dressed yeah. like Ronald McDonald. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I think I think mind blown. I think well well done. And this was not, you know, this almost has the feel of the, you know, where they were liking the tweets, like doing these kinds of things that are almost organic. This cost them. I mean, they gave away a lot of food. Yeah. Like so, there was a heavy cost oh, yeah. to this. But when you see the results in terms of the sales that increase and all that, I, I'm gonna guess it clearly was a, was a was a positive ROI. So we, we cre oh yeah, 22.4 million yeah, earned. Yeah, so, so <laughs> we, uh, we preach the customer value journey. And to me, if you're getting someone to perhaps go buy a costume, because I'm assuming 110,000 people didn't just have a clown yeah. costume, they go buy a costume, they yeah. put it on, they go out in public to come to your store in person. Yeah. That is worth giving them a free burger because you have like established such a connection. Odds are very good that all of those people will probably be back at Burger King. Yeah. I mean, that's that's smart stuff. That's <coughs> excite phase. To me, that's convert stage, excite phase. Yeah. And I think it's a great move. I love it's it. A good one. My mind is blown by that one. Yeah. Okay. I actually, okay, this next one. This is Tesla. I actually remember when this happened. Do you remember this? If, if we're going where I think we're going. Yes, yes. I'm sure it is. It's the Cybertruck. The truck. unveiling? The unveiling yeah. of the Cybertruck. Yeah. So this person, let's see, oh, Naveen oh S, God. who uh, posted this example Maybe on this Quora thread, <laughs> he seems to think that this was an intentional moment of marketing. <laughs> and so what happens, uh, they roll out this Cybertruck, which is really anticipated, and everybody's really excited, and they come out, and they're going to say, oh, man, this thing is so... Uh, so indestructible it's so durable that you know we're gonna hit it with a sledgehammer and it's gonna be just fine so uh even the glass so they come out and they hit the glass <laughs> and it breaks yep uh and and i thought at the time it seemed like kind of an embarrassing moment for elon musk but um, according to this it was all kind of a a stage thing and it was because it did i mean i think that event probably had a lot more eyeballs on it because well there's the glass no doubt broke there's no doubt but in terms of the overall brand and product was it more damaging yeah i like, don't know was, was the pr worth it i, I don't, don't know, know. well first question. off we're in texas <clears throat> that's not a truck okay so this next one this is interesting it's warren buffett Okay. Okay. Before I show you the images here, do you Wait, like Berkshire Hathaway, or this is just an ad for Warren Buffett? What's it's what's not the... an ad for Warren Buffett. Okay. This okay. Is just, okay. Just it's just like general marketing here. Okay. What of you? What you know of Warren Buffett? What are some of his big stocks? Oh goodness, um, he's been all over the place. But he's he he uh, was big on Apple yes. most recently. Yeah. Um, Oh, you're putting me on the spot. I don't know. No, no, no. It's okay. okay. Coca-Cola. Well, I know he drinks a Coke. Like, he drinks Coke every day. Yes. Yeah. But he owns, can this number be right? 400 million, million shares, shares of Coca-Cola? Worth a total of $18.9 billion? Wow. Is it possible that people drink Coca-Cola because Warren Buffett drinks Coca-Cola? I can tell you that if I owned that many shares of Coca-Cola, I'd be doing everything I could to get people to drink Coca-Cola. <laughs> yeah. Which I think, I mean, to be honest, I think that's been his thing forever. He, yeah. he has a Coke every day. Yeah. Um, he's a big Coca-Cola drinker. So, yeah. That's crazy. That's nuts. I mean, but, but I mean, they have photographed him everywhere with it. Yeah. And I don't know if and this cherry, was... He's a big cherry fan. Always cherry coke. Yeah, cherry like. coke. I yeah. like cherry coke. Me too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know if this was like a, like somebody in Berkshire Hathaway marketing department was like, hey, Warren, you need to be seen drinking a coke. Or if Warren's just like, man, I own all this coke. I'm buying drinking cokes, man. Who that knows? and you know, he always drives through the McDonald's every morning for breakfast. Yeah. And it's like, <clears throat> what's his thing? Like if the stock market's doing well, he'll get like, 
he'll get like the whole English oh, muffin, man. and if it's not doing well, he'll just get like the hash brown something or something. Different. Like he changes his breakfast order at based McDonald's on the based market. on how the stock market is. It's a very, like a very warm buffet thing. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that's incredible. Maybe we'll stop there. Okay. All right. All right. So those are the examples. But I wanted to ask, um, just in your life, what is what are some of um, your favorite examples? Maybe your maybe your top one that comes to mind. My uh, favorite. So this is fictitious, okay? That's but fine. I still remember it, um, like back from when I was a kid, and still from a marketing standpoint, yeah, I love it. So it is, um, it's Willy Wonka and the Golden Tickets. Oh yeah! Oh that's yeah, of course. Like there was just something about this exclusivity and everyone trying to get these golden tickets, and I remember watching that as a kid, Absolutely. and I was, I was like, what must that have been like oh, to get a golden man. ticket? Yeah, and mind blown, they were all kids. Okay, so I have one, a local one, um, okay. that I didn't know what it was for a long time, and there was so much mystery around it. Okay. And I started noticing, like I started having <laughs> other conversations with people, and finally I was like, hey, have you seen this thing? What is this? And you'll know exactly what oh, I'm talking about. Oh, I know about. where you're going. It's the stickers on the back of the car. They say, yeah. all they say is, go see Ken. Yes. And I started seeing them everywhere on the back of all these cars, and I'm like, who's Ken? Why do we need to go see Ken? And so yeah. I started asking, who's Ken? Who's Ken? And it turns out he, he does like bicycle. He's repair. a bike fitter. Yeah. yeah. So like in the like cycling and triathlon community, which is real big in our area. Yeah. So it kind of helped take off. But uh, getting fit to your bike is really important. But I guess people took like, you're like, hey, yeah, I got a new bike. Oh, you should go see Ken. Yeah. They took like what was this just referral expression and it is it was it turned into a marketing campaign which yeah. is just brilliant but it also got the people it also got everyone asking who's Ken yeah and like, what, even, what is this <laughs> i've even seen people print stickers that say you know who the f is ken <laughs> you know in our because area, it's generated it's pretty, that much really has. like conversation yeah which is incredible yeah. for a local business to have other people making products that are yeah. discussing your marketing yeah that's next level that is next level so yeah. so good but good job ken yeah good job ken video wise uh what can people do to kind of bring in that unexpected uh kind of fun element that that kind of breaks the routine makes people stop stop the scroll and look and see what you're doing yeah uh, i guess a couple of things one is um i say characters mm, yeah because um you know, spokesperson, a spokesperson, things like that. They can only push the envelope so far. Well, this conversation is really familiar. It really is. I feel like we've had this conversation before. Maybe. Wait a minute. We have a free training <laughs> about how to make funny videos for your business. Hi, I'm Casey. And this is Matt. And we are here to share with you our tips that we've learned at Gravity Digital to create viral style videos that sell your stuff. Using these strategies, we have helped our clients more than double their sales. Uh, before we get started, I feel like I need to throw out a big warning here. Um, if you don't have the bottom of the funnel ready to go, you can actually waste a whole lot of money. Because these viral style videos, it's like pouring a bunch of water in the top of a bucket. You know, if that bucket has holes, it's not going to do you much good. That's right. And your funnel works the same way. So get your entry point offers, your email automations, upsells and cross sells ready to go before you start trying to get a bunch of eyeballs and traffic at the top of the funnel. Make sure your back end is in good shape. My back end's in good shape. We'll put a link to that in the description. If you want a free training on how to make funny videos for your own business, we'll give you our top tips. Just check it out in the description. Yep. And with that, we'll leave you. Say goodbye. That was a weird ending.